passage of Scripture, the portion in the book of Romans, which uh, teaches what salvation is, what God says our salvation is. And we see that uh, the Apostle Paul said that uh, the gospel or the good news about Jesus, he said it's the power of God to salvation to everyone that believes. And in chapter 1, chapter 2, and all the way up into chapter 3, we've seen that anyone could believe. There's not a single person in the world that can't believe. And the Apostle Paul, under the influence of God's Holy Spirit, answers questions and misconceptions that individuals would have or accusations they would make against God regarding their salvation. You ever said to somebody, hey, you need to trust Jesus for your salvation. You need to trust in the death, the burial, and resurrection of Christ. You need to ask God to save you because of what Jesus did when God demonstrated His love uh, toward us in the work of the cross. If you ask God to save you, He'll save you if you recognize you're a sinner and that you uh, don't deserve to go to heaven. You don't deserve to have a relationship with God. And just by simply asking God to save you, He will. And you share that with somebody and they say, I wish I could, but I can't. And uh, they, you say, well, why can't you? Well, I just have a hard time believing. Friend, the book of Romans, chapters 1, 2, and 3 answer that question. Can anyone believe? And we say that belief is a choice. It's a matter of a heart's attitude toward God saying, God, I refuse to trust Jesus. And we see the reasons for unbelief. In chapter 1, the reason for belief, the Bible says, is because you don't want to. It says they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. God gave them up. He, he allowed them to not believe. And friend, I want to say to you, if you don't want to trust Jesus as your Savior, God won't force you into heaven. He won't make you go to heaven. And friend, you and I uh, need to understand that our salvation is dependent on fully upon Jesus Christ. We are saved fully by God's grace. We live for the Lord by God's grace. And anybody who wants to can know God and have a relationship with Him. There's a choice that every man makes, and it's a choice between belief and unbelief. And so a person there would say, well, you know what, I have a problem with God, because what about the poor people in the world that uh, would, would believe if they knew? I mean, not everybody in the world knows about Jesus. Well, the Scripture answered that question very plainly, very clearly. The Bible teaches that all men in their heart know that there's a God, and they even know the, uh, the character of God. They know uh, the nature of Him, or the Godhead, as the Scripture says, so they're without excuse. And so they know that he's, he's an eternal God. He's an almighty God. Listen, my friend, it wasn't some statue or idol that somebody built that created this world. It wasn't some kind of a God of the earth, or God of the heaven, or God of the sea. It was an almighty God, who is God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit. And they're born knowing that in their hearts, the Bible says. And for that reason, no man's without excuse. And then we saw... Now, for those individuals that have the law of God, that they're accountable because they have God's Word, and we're speaking of the Jews, and how that there's no excuse for somebody who's Jewish to not believe in Jesus Christ. Unless a Gentile or a person that's of another nation would say, well, it's not fair, you know, that's discrimination. Uh, they are the race that had God's law and had God's Word, and they were the individuals that were chosen for God's Son to be born uh, through their lineage. And uh, so they had a special advantage, and they can believe in God. What about the poor Gentiles that are just outsiders, and they're... They're lost without God. we got the law of God written in our hearts. And so when we do right or wrong, based upon what God has placed in our hearts, every person knows that there's right and there's wrong. Whether they admit it or not, they're just born that way and they've got justice system. You find a toddler or younger, find a little baby, and take something from them. Just go up to them and whatever they're enjoying, if it's a pacifier, yank it out of their mouth and stick it in your mouth if you like. And you wait and see if they think that's wrong. They'll let you know right away. They'll say, it's a violation of my justice system. I've been wrong. Why is that that they know that that shouldn't happen and that they shouldn't have their passy taken from them? Well, the reason for it, my friend, is because God put a law in their hearts and they were born with it. And nobody had to, had to teach them that. They knew. Matter of fact, you tell a little child who God is, you say, this is who God is. He's the creator of the world. They say, oh, okay. Yeah, I knew that. And it makes sense to them because God placed in their heart a knowledge of Him. And so no person's without excuse, my friend. There's no one in the world. And so we spent a couple chapters in the Scripture looking at the fact that anyone who wants to know God can. My friend, the Scripture talks about God Almighty. And it says He's the rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. And any person in the world who has ever wanted to know God Almighty based upon the knowledge that He placed in their heart of who He is and His character, any person who's ever desired to know the Lord, uh, they, they can and God reveals Himself to them. Next time you lead someone to the Lord, you ask them if they wanted somebody to tell them Bible truth, scriptural truth. The next time the Lord uses you to lead someone to Jesus Christ, you come to them and say, you know I'm here today because I want to share the gospel with you. And they respond to the preaching of the gospel. Ask them, was today the first time you thought about eternal things? Now say, you know what, I've been dwelling on this for a while. And I've been hoping that someone has shown me the truth about how to go to heaven. You know why? Because they're seeking God. And so God's a rewarder of that. Anybody who wants to know God can, my friend. 
And you can't make an accusation against holy God who is love and has demonstrated His love that He's not a loving God because He sends people to hell. My friend, people go to hell because they hate God and they choose to be His enemy. They don't go to hell because they've responded to the love of Jesus Christ in the work of the cross. My friend, anyone can be saved. Anyone uh, is who God died for. And it's in the word whosoever is what the Scripture is talking about in that. Now last week as we were in Romans chapter 3, uh, we began the message that I was hoping we would get to uh, preach today, but we, we didn't get all the way there, and, I, and uh, I'm glad for it, because I really wanted to have a little more time. Last week in Romans chapter 3, we saw another argument for not believing in God, and it was sort of a, it was a little more complicated, a little more complex. This is for the intelligent unbeliever, the person who's an intelligent rebel or thinks he's intelligent. You know, isn't it interesting that um, intelligence is never based upon reality, it's always based upon the person thinking they're intelligent? Brother Tony and I uh, have a little running joke about a person that's the smartest person in the world because he said so. And uh, anyway, uh, he's, he's very intelligent. He's incredibly intelligent, and he is because he said so. You know, and we're supposed to accept that. got a high IQ, etc. Friend, none of us thinks we're dumb, by the way. Let's just level with ourselves. We all think we're smarter than everybody else. It's, we're born that way. You know, they just haven't recognized our talent, you know. And they just, they just don't know what we know, or they know that I was smarter. Everybody feels that, that, you know. So if you think you're that way, well, just ask around. You'll find out you are just like everybody else. And you may be the dumbest person in the world, and you'll be just like all the other dumb people that think they're smart. And I don't mean that in kind of being funny or just a little bit this morning, but you know what I mean, don't you? Everybody thinks they're intelligent. And many times with intelligence, we, we, we think that we can throw complication at a matter and <coughs> snowball our way into innocence. And by that, what we mean is, well, let's come up with a really deep argument about why I'm not accountable to God for my salvation. So here's the response to, okay, so you say, uh, you say, Jesus, you say, uh, Paul, if you will, Paul was used by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit to pen the Scripture here, you say that no person is without excuse, Jews are without excuse, because they have the law of God, or the, the, the Word of God was given to them, and they're responsible for the preservation of the Scripture. They held the Bible, and they learned it, they memorized it, they knew it, and they are responsible to God because they have God's Word. And you say that Gentiles are responsible because they have God's law written in their hearts. And so both of them are without excuse. Well, here's one for you. What if, what if there was no sin? How will we know God's good? What if, what if somebody didn't go to hell? What if somebody didn't sin against God and violate God's law? God's law wouldn't have any effect. God's law wouldn't look good if it, if it wasn't for us. So God needs some wicked people. And so, God picked me to be wicked. I'm chosen for wickedness, and it's to make God good. And if God picked me to be wicked, then it's not fair for Him to send me to hell because He made me be wicked. He needed me to be wicked. And so, I'm just doing my job. This is, this is, and so, you know, God's not good. That's a real complicated argument that you can summarize by saying, that's dumb. That doesn't make any sense at all, friend. The truth of the matter is, is that uh, we need to level with, our, with the fact that our sin is personal against God. And that we personally need Jesus Christ, our Savior. And you can come with all kinds of arguments and talk about all kinds of things. By the way, uh, you know, I have a saying I haven't said in a while, so I'll say it for folks that haven't heard it. Be careful about hypothetical situations. What if God? Could God make a rock so big that He couldn't move it? And friend, the answer to that question is, yeah, sure He could. Why wouldn't He? You know, well, you know, people have all kinds of hypotheses and theorizing about that. I was in college one time, and there were uh, a group of fellows that were going into Calvinism, and... Uh, it was before they got kicked out for it. And uh, they, they thought they were smarter than everybody else. They were speech majors. I don't know why, but it seemed like it always the speech people that think they're smart because they can talk. They don't have anything to say, but they can talk, and they're professionals at it. And I shouldn't pick on speech. I mean, there's probably some here today. Well, anyway, I remember being in college, and this happens. It, it happens in all Christian colleges, and it happens in the speech department. I don't know why. I think all Christian colleges should banish speech people forever and <laughs> put them out. But I remember one time a guy that was a speech major. I was in college. This has been years back. And the, uh, a young fella came in, and he asked me a question, one of these hypothetical, could God do this kind of questions. And I said, that's a hypothetical question. I said, neither you or I know the answer to that question because neither of us can really relate to God because He's way smarter than both of us. So I don't know what God would do because I'm not as smart as He is. He created my mind with its limitations, and He created your mind with its limitations. I didn't preach that anymore. I said it to Him. I just said it in a conversational manner, in case you're wondering. I said He made our, both of our minds with their limitations. And um, if God's smart enough to make our brains, then He's smarter than our brains can comprehend. Amen. 
right? You can't, you can't create a person. And so don't go thinking you're smart enough to know how God would or wouldn't do something. By, by the way, I'm not preaching you can't know God. You want to know God, go to the Scripture and believe Him. Go to the Word, His Word, where He tells you what He's like and believe Him. And you'll know God, my friend. You'll find out that the God's Word is true.